Greetings and good evening. Welcome to the Psychic Inside Show. I'm your host, Joelle, and I'm the vibrarian. I'm here to elevate, enlighten, and empower with information and experiences that I hope you find enjoyable and enlightening. Now, the Psychic Inside Show is on the Vibrary Radio Network here on Blog Talk Radio. Normally, it's on a Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. As you know, it's Thursday, but I've got a special guest lined up this evening, and I needed to get her in the schedule, so tonight is the night for that to happen, and I couldn't be more excited. Now, the Vibrary Radio Network, all of our programming is available for you on any of the podcast directories. You can look us up in iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, you can visit us on YouTube to listen to old episodes of the show. I've had probably 30 or 40 psychics who have come on the show to share about their life stories. And I tell you what, I learn something new each time we sit down for one of these conversations. Now, I would love to connect with you. I believe in spreading the positivity. So if you are out there and would like to connect with the, what I like to call the Good Vibe Tribe, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook under at the Vibrarian. Now that is spelled V I B E as in vibes. R-A-R-I-A-N, at The Vibrarian. And please just tag me if you see something that you want to be passed on. It could be something that makes you smile, a motivational story, some kind of positivity. I absolutely want to amplify that as much as I can. So if you tag me, I'll do my best to lend my support to that message. I think we spend entirely too much time on the negative, and I'd like to contribute my efforts effort to expanding the positive. So as you know, if you've been tuning in, I believe firmly that everyone is psychic. You just may not recognize it. So each week when I have these conversations, I'm talking with people who have stepped forward into discovering themselves and learned about their own particular way that their psychic gifts and abilities have been expressed. And I tell you what, it is a spectrum of stories, and it just keeps getting better and better each time I have a conversation. So my guest this evening, I've only met her very recently. Now, as you know, I like to talk about going up to Gloria Parker's big psychic fair up in Roswell, Georgia. There's a reason I talk about it. This fair has been going on for almost 30 years, and that is certainly a legacy of contributing to the metaphysical community in Atlanta, and many awesome psychics and readers have passed through Gloria's event, providing services to clients who come from all over the southeast so it truly is a wonderful place to meet people so when i was there a couple months ago this energy was sitting right beside me and i'll tell you i was immediately looking at her cards because i love tarot and i love card art and she was getting ready to do readings with a deck that i have been admiring some for some time but i don't yet own so i struck up a conversation with the young lady and uh, we had a great kind of talking shop and comparing notes and i found her energy just to be so delightful. So I'd love to introduce you and welcome to the show this evening, Cecilia, Cecilia Hoyak. Thank you for coming on to the Psychic Inside show tonight. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Joelle. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you what, uh, one thing about people who love tarot is kind of like uh, when people love cats, you know what I'm saying? They all can like really go on and on about cat stuff, right? So people who love tarot cards, you can kind of get down into the the thickets when you're looking at cards. And it was like really nice to have this conversation with you about the symbolism and the imagery that that we were working with with our divination tools. I thought that was really cool. Would you say that tarot and and your use of it is a large part of your psychic uh, being or how you how you receive your psychic messages? 
I would say partially. It's definitely how I'm able to channel for other people, for sure. I'm channeling constantly all the time without doing anything, really, always receiving messages. And I know that my whole life I've been receiving messages without even knowing what tarot was. Tarot's really just become an outlet for me for myself um, as far as getting clarity and validation for my own messages, as well as being able to interpret and provide messages for other people. And it's funny you mentioned the cat thing, too, because my I have two cats, and my one just jumped up right before <laughs> you said that, so I think he knows that something's <laughs> happening in his realm right now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, it is so interesting because you said uh, your whole life, I would reckon to say, and I hope you don't mind me saying, that you probably are not quite even 30 years old. Are you I am uh, in your t- I am 30. Oh, you are 30. Okay. Well, yes. I know that you were very youthful. So it was not like you're talking about decades and decades and decades of life. You're still really young. And that was something that was honestly very noticeable to me when I was looking around the room of, you know, a dozen plus psychic readers. I think you were probably the youngest person there that particular week. Do you find that a lot of times you're one of the youngest psychics in the room as you go places? Yes, I would say yes. As far as what kind of level I'm at, and I don't really like putting like levels on it to say that any of us are higher up or more connected than the other because it it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't really Mm -hmm. work like that. But as far as knowing myself and knowing the gifts that I have and what I'm able to do for myself and other people, I do find that I'm usually the youngest. (laughs) But ironically, a lot of my friends who are my age are kind of coming into it Mm -hmm. as well at the same time. I'm just kind of at a quicker a quicker mm-hmm. pace. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's what I suspected anyway. That's good confirmation to know. And it is quite interesting how the kind of way shower uh, wave emerges and then the sparks like jump up in mass at some point after that. Yes. So I think it's exciting for you. I mean, I will say this, your energy was definitely felt. I was sitting right next to you and I'm very much about like vibration because this is, Obviously, you know, yes. I'm <laughs> Right, right. But I'm still very new into, like, uh, newer, as you said, in terms of practicing as a professional psychic. So I'm always observing and learning the energies around. And your energy was really nice. Now, I say that because when I looked at your card, your title is the Gypsy Witch. Now, for me personally, in this whole consciousness evolution that we're having, I've adopted in my personal framework an awareness that words have been misused. And I believe that the word witch is one of those words that has taken on a construct that is not necessarily in alignment with um, the history of what uh, so-called witchy women were. However, even though I've expanded my belief systems, I have to say that the word still has a frequency. So as I was, yeah, yeah, as I was talking with you, your energy was great, right? So it was challenging me to put into practice my enlightened awareness, right? To say, okay, let's see, what is this term which? And so I'm really very curious on a personal level to kind of understand, I guess you're probably the first person that I know that has stated I am you know I think your bias says you're a hedge witch and I had to restrain myself from looking up that term before Uh the interview because I really wanted to hear it from a person not a you know a piece of data so can you share with me about what your business name is and what your philosophy is maybe take it as a teachable moment (laughs) sure (laughs) about the word witch (laughs) So witch came pretty recently. Um, I My spiritual awakening um, pretty much started when I was 27. 
And I know it's a pretty specific specific time, but it was at 27 is when kind of the transition over um, where things that have been happening my whole life, um, different, you know, abilities and gifts that I would have that I didn't realize were gifts. Um, it turned over and I realized that that meant something and it's why it was different than other people. And then the witch part of it didn't actually happen until right around when I turned 30, um, which was in October, ironically, because October is Halloween and 30, um, <laughs> three is considered strongly to be the number of the witch. So it kind of is all very synchronistic. Synchronicity plays a big part in my life and my guides and my higher self are very sarcastic and they do things like this all the time where they put things together. That's kind of laughable, but it works mm -hmm. for me and it's how I receive the messages. It was honestly scary for me when the messages started coming in that witch was the word that I needed to use to describe myself best and it's mm -hmm. not even about um, the spiritual path of the witch it's about just being a witch in general as who I am as a person so that was something that I did have to work through myself and it mainly came from what I think scares most people about the word witch is the whole devil or sa satanic part of it or assumption that that is a big core of what which means and I'm still going through the process of understanding what that energy means to me but overall it was just knowing and doing research and watching YouTube videos of other women who practice witchcraft and reading books that ultimately say in the devil which these are more um kind of like religious terms, but I still use them in my spiritual practice. It's an energy that doesn't have to have anything to do with witchcraft at all. So once I knew that and was able to accept that into my body and my reality, I was able to finally define myself as a witch. And through my whole spiritual awakening, I never was able to find a quote, a, a label, um, which Labels aren't really my thing, but it's the only <laughs> word I can really use to describe it, but a label that fit me because light worker didn't really fit. Medium seems like um, kind of too wide mm -hmm. of an umbrella, but also um, my, when I actually at the psychic fair, you were talking about Gloria's big psychic fair. Um, I, when I first um, started going as just a person who was um, there for information and to talk to psychics and to get, to get reading mm -hmm. instead of give them, I was told that I would be a medium. And I literally cried in front of her because all I knew was <laughs> I see dead people. <laughs> I, was mm -hmm. like, I don't mm -hmm. want that. So like I said, mm. other terms just didn't really work for me and which just fit perfectly. And it came at such an ironic time right around my birthday. And then once I did, started doing more research into what witchcraft is and looking more into the history, which I think we all know a little bit um, about the history of witches, at least, you know, as far as the Salem witch trials, which weren't, I mean, most of them weren't actually witches. You know, they were just your everyday person who was accused of witchcraft, but then I start hearing about, well, there's different kinds of witches. There's a green witch or a kitchen witch or a hedge witch or a sea witch or um, just lists and lists of, and you can be more than one. And the one that really resonated the most with me that is more of a quote unquote basic witch term is a hedge witch, which is basically a psychic witch or a medium type of person. While all witches are connected spiritually in their own way to um, the other side, hedge witches are the most connected. It's their number one point in their practice. Like a green witch would be more of, you know, the person with the green thumb who loves gardening and loves the outdoors and is really good with plants and may not do anything that has to do with a psychic ability. They just, you know, have a green thumb. And then a kitchen witch, um, they may make their own their own medicines. They may be really big about going green and uh, recycling or living waste free and things like that, but they may not actually have a psychic practice that they do. While hedge witches, that's what it is. And it's actually a reference to going, flying over the hedge. If you think of a bush flying over the mm -hmm. hedge, the other realm on the other side is where that term oh. comes from. And 
yeah, kind of like brooms and witches. You know, brooms come from flying, witches flying on their brooms. It's like flying it over the hedge into the other dimension. Oh. Obviously, you would think this is all more of a mental, you know, mentality game rather than actually physically going anywhere. <laughs> mm. But that's where that term comes from. And then the gypsy part sense. of it, uh, <laughs> right, the, the gypsy part of it just kind of comes with um, kind of, I mean, I guess maybe I'll, I'll be honest and say stereotypically it started with like the concept of gypsies being very free spirited. And I've always been attracted to that sort of aesthetic, I guess you can say. And I don't, not, mm-hmm. and I don't even mean in like a dress, a, like a dress, the way I dress, but just that mm-hmm. um, culture. But then also my, on my father's side, um, his father, who um, he always said, my gramps always said that our ancestors on his side were gypsies from Eastern Europe. And I know that mm. his father came from Northern Italy when he immigrated, but it was, he wasn't from Italy. They don't really know exactly where he was from mm. because he was part of a a gypsy clan where they would have traveled all over. So it is part of my mm-hmm. ancestry as well. And it's funny how all these little things kind of come together, things I've known mm. my whole life and it all clicks. And now I'm at a really good place where I'm settled in this title that I've given myself. And I take a lot of power in that. So this, uh, there's a difference that, okay. So what, from what I'm understanding, so Uh, Religious practices such as Christianity or Satanism does something different. Those are like apples, right? So then witches is like oranges. It's something different. It would be like, say, a shaman is a particular kind of interact way of interacting or philosophy of interacting with the other realms. And so is witchcraft then similar to that in terms of a practice? Is that a correct analogy? Witches are kind of integrated. Witches, you can be a witch, you can identify as a witch and still be religious. I've met a Catholic witch. Right. She doesn't really right. talk okay. to her Catholic friends about about practicing a witchcraft. You know, she does a lot of voodoo um, and things like that. But she does go to a Catholic church every Sunday. Um, and then also um, Wiccan um, is a lot associated with witches. So a witch can be Wiccan, but Wiccan would be the religion, and being just a witch is just being a witch. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. And from what the way I understand it historically is that um, before the rise of Christianity, like in your village, the the woman who had the herb craft, who knew the remedy work, who worked with the elements, who helped find water and locate the, you know, to use nature and knowledge of nature and also passed on knowledge from the previous, that those were the women that were eventually labeled as witches. But they were, like, it was a real, like, understanding of the natural world and being able to use it for, I guess, positive or negative, but only the negative was uh, spread by the powers that be in order to suppress the the feminine is kind of the storyline that has resonated most with me. Is that is that correct in terms of how yes. you understand it? Okay. I believe <laughs> okay. So there are male witches um, that can be part of. I don't. You know, they have the whole separation between witches and warlocks in books like Harry Potter, which I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. But um, as far as the research that I have done and the people that I have met, if um, there is some kind of a practice of the craft that a, a, a man or a male is doing, they he would still refer to himself as a witch. So it is more okay. of a feminine energy, I believe, and the history of it. But I mean, um, the most the most popular um, witch persecution in Germany back in the 1660s was a man persecuted mm. as a witch. So okay, it really just you know it, there's there's a there's a 
a give and take. Which is more, you know, because you can have someone who's great at gardening or who is, you know, people today are really great at um, being out outdoorsy and being able to go out and survive, you know, survivalists. And, mm-hmm. you know, they don't call themselves witches, but another person doing the exact same thing could. So witch is very much mm-hmm. like a power mm-hmm. that you find inside yourself that you um, right. take that title. Yeah. That's fascinating. This, I mean, it's great because I'm like, okay, let me talk directly to somebody, right? And then when I saw that in your bio, I'm like, okay, this is a great opportunity because what I understood was that your energy was positive. Like, you know, in your bio, you're like, I had a rapid awakening, you know, and I want to get into that here in just a moment. But you're like, I am here to serve humanity, right, and yeah. Uh, yeah. to improve it. And so one would expect if you're following in the common well I guess shows like charmed and stuff like that show right. uh, non non evil witchery but you know the prevailing popular meme is the 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 evil intended person who's using uh their magic for evil purposes equals which and that's just not true, you know, uh right. because right. I didn't get that from your energy at all. And, you know, I try not to give that off. And I um, actually had a couple people when I was first going to do the psychic fair and I wrote my profile to set out for people to look at. I had some people who know me very well say, well, you might not want to put the witch on there because it might scare people. And I came from the point of view where I said, well, if I go and put that out there, that that's what I am because it is what I am. It's why I identify myself and it comes from, you know, my, my ancestry and past lives and all of that. And I don't have anyone who wants to get a reading from me because of that word that I'm just, you know, Mm -hmm. not meant to serve anyone who's here. Or maybe this place is not um, where I'm meant to serve people. And I had um, several, I mean, more than several um, from what I've heard from the people who run the psychic fair that I had a really great amount of people come see me that first month, including two, um, young teenage girls who were there with their mother Mm -hmm. wanting to Mm -hmm. talk to the witch, you know, and it is shows like now the new um, Sabrina, uh, the teenage witch show on Netflix, Mm -hmm. which I love, by the way, it's very much about um, being in service of the dark Lord and Satan. And they're more, I would consider that show more about um, them being state, state, Satanists, witches. So Satanism as the religion, um, and I know that I believe a producer of that show is pagan, so everything's accurate. The statues they use, some of the spells they use, and the references they use. Now, I thoroughly enjoy that show, but I take it with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, there are mm-hmm. witches out there who are Satanists, and I've done some research on Satanism, and, it, you know, I'm all about asking questions. That's what's great about what we're right. doing right now is you didn't see the mm-hmm. witch and just, was like, oh, well, that's it. You're asking the questions. I like when people ask questions, even if usually the first question I get when I tell people I'm a practicing witch is, do you worship Satan? And, (laughs) you know, it doesn't offend me. I'm just like, no, that would be a Satanist, and I'm not religious. So that's not what I do. But um, I do – I feel like I, um, I appreciate what you're saying about the kind of the light energy that I hold. And um, I like the word you use, delightful. That was really sweet. Um, but I do, um, and very recently I've been kind of trying to accept that dark side because witches are all about accepting the light and the dark, you know, the light side of yourself and the shadow self and working with both. And that's been a huge part of my spiritual journey in the last three years is really um, working with my shadow self more than Mm -hmm. the light. It's like the light was always there and then the shadow self was being ignored. And that's what I've mainly had to work on in my journey. Mm. That is such a common thing. You know, I mean, this is an awesome conversation, let me just say, because it's just right (laughs) up my alley. Uh, But, you know, like um, there is that thing of in the uh, illumined or light working, those who are like very much aware and trying to create a higher vibration of our reality that um, sometimes is then uh, shunning the aspect of the darkness, right, or tries to uh, 
uh, it's like being so airy fairy that you don't see the nitty gritty in it. And so there is more conversation now about, you know, doing um, the the shadow self and not being afraid to look at the the darkness. Now that's not going in and wrecking havoc and doing harm and evil and saying, oh, I'm relishing in my dark. You know what I'm saying? No, that's like <laughs> looking at the way that our human experience, how we respond to that, that may not be as loving or balanced or positive as we would hope or desire it to become. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's hard work. That really is hard work. Now, you talk about you went through a rapid awakening. So, like, that whole dark night of the soul kind of yeah. sudden illumination and the shadow, I'm assuming that was all part of this bubble that, that exploded in your life. Could you share what your awakening looked like for you? Sure. Um, so, my dark night of the soul, I think, started a long time ago, actually, um, when I – graduated high school and went to college, I overnight got extremely depressed. And I believe that that's where my dark night of the soul started. There were a couple things that I can identify as triggers that could have started it because it really came out of nowhere. I was really looking forward to going to college. I was looking forward to living far away from home and being on my own and being somewhere new and learning and getting my higher education and everything. And then all of a sudden, just overnight, super depressed and lots of thinking about death and um, kind of wishing for it and things like that. And I never got to a point where I was attempting to harm myself, but a lot of thought went into it. And Mm -hmm. um, pretty much for 10 years, I was going through this and that was, you know, being in college and then realizing that that wasn't getting me anywhere because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to class. I wasn't being productive um, and just racking up student loan bills that I would have to pay off later for no reason. So I ended up leaving school and moving home. Now in this transition, I did meet um, a woman who was my roommate in college, who is now still one of my best friends and a kind Mm -hmm. of in her own way, emerging, which you know, we're, we're talking about that with her as well. But um, it's funny how, you know, spirit and the universe links you in ways to people mm-hmm. over time. But it was really an up and down struggle for my entire adult life, pretty much. And mostly, I would say more bad days than good as far as feeling hopeless. And that's really the word that I like mm-hmm. to use. I felt very hopeless. I felt like I was not where I thought I would be in life. I was not doing what my goals were, um, I didn't even have goals and I was doing things like going to therapy and for a little bit I was on medication. And while it did help, um, in recognizing some things, it wasn't solving the root of the problem. And Mm -hmm. when I was 27, I was in a really good place, still depressed, still had the really, um, and I, you know, I used, uh, Depressed, uh, you know, that's a word we all throw around. Like, everyone has depressed days. Depressed is actually a very normal word. It's just people use, like, Mm -hmm. and affiliate it with depression, and it gets all mixed up. But I Mm -hmm. was dealing with serious, what would be considered clinical depression. And then when I was 27, Mm -hmm. in a job that I had, which I've had many jobs because I just kind of rotate in and out of them. I have really bad luck with jobs, but now I know that that was spirit trying to keep pushing me in the right direction, Mm -hmm. and it never working. I met um, a woman my age um, named Sarah, and I won't get too specific about her because we are not in communication anymore, but Mm -hmm. um, she ended up becoming my roommate, and we started talking at work a little bit more because she was very much into psychics and mediums, and she did tarot, and she knew all these things that I had only shown a little bit of interest in, or Mm -hmm. I I guess I could have considered myself spiritual before as far as what I believed was beyond this lifetime, but no concrete Mm -hmm. security in it. But she knew about all these things that I already believed in and um, things that interest me and things that scared me, you know, mediums scared me back then, you know, Mm -hmm. being able to communicate Mm -hmm. with the dead um, was something that really scared me. And 
I just started asking questions and we became good friends. And she's actually the first person who took me to Gloria's psychic fair. And okay. she, ended up becoming, she ended up becoming my roommate and she lived with me for a year. And in that transition, she became very much um, a positive light in my life and a guide. And um, I don't really know uh, what to call it, but we were definitely, this was all, you know, planned for this lifetime. Right. She was just, definitely supposed to come into my life at a specific time. We have past life connections. She always said that she was mm-hmm. kind of the yang to my yang. You know, we were very different people, which was a great experience mm-hmm. for me to live with her because we were so different, not even in like the spiritual realm. We were very, that was where we were aligned. It was kind of everything else mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. ourselves <laughs> that was very different. And mm-hmm. um, so during that transition, I guess, um, so I met her when I was 27, and then I turned 28 when she still lived with me. And when I was 28, literally overnight, the depression was gone. And it was just because I'd had so mm. much growth living with her and learning things. And she would do tarot readings for me. And she really validated that I had gifts. And because I always felt, I just always felt different from other people. And I felt, I've always felt like I didn't belong here on this planet, Mm. in this body. And she really validated that, yes, you know, that is true, but you chose to have this Mm -hmm. human life and existence. And she was able to answer a lot of questions for me. And also we were, um, as I began to ascend very rapidly, I Mm -hmm. could see where we kind of weren't aligned in our spirituality. And that was really a challenge for me to just not take everything that she said as truth for myself, because when you have Mm -hmm. someone you really admire and really look up to, and they're telling you things, but it doesn't feel good in your body, Mm -hmm. not that they mean anything negative by it, but just from their own personal experiences, it was a challenge to learn to kind of not take everything that she said, you know, as Mm -hmm. truth for myself. And, that was a huge growing experience. And then when, um, so she lived with me for a year and then she moved out for her own personal reasons, you know, living on your own and things like that. And since then we haven't really been in communication, which was something that I had to really process um, because it was a really painful thing that I went through. And Mm -hmm. I know that she's in a really good place right now. And I'm really proud of her as far as, you know, Um, keeping up a little bit, not so much anymore, but I was keeping up with her social media and things like that. And um, she's going in great directions. I'm really happy for her. I am sad at the friendship that I lost, but um, in my conversations with spirit and in myself and with the universe, I know that, you know, everything happens for a reason and it, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you figure out what it actually has to do with you and not with you, but I'm very grateful. I am, 100% grateful for her, and I hope that she gets nothing but everything she wants in life because she's really the catalyst for everything for me. And then since then, it's really just been, you know, constantly, (laughs) I'm constantly channeling all the time, and I'll do tarot for myself Mm -hmm. when I feel like I need it, Um, and learning about witchcraft and learning about lots of different things. My mind's always going. I have um, also, I have very vivid and lucid dreams since I was a child. And I thought that was something that was normal until I realized from most other people that it's not. I get Mm -hmm. most messages uh, from my dreams. I've started connecting, um, you know, with my, you know, third eye where I can actually see things. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. so I'll talk to my grandparents now and I'm getting more connected with them on the other side and my guides in general, I have a very close relationship with a few guides that I have, which come to me more as um, like deities. So I work with, in my practice, I work mainly with uh, Greek and Egyptian deities. It's something that has Mm -hmm. really resonated with me for a really long time since I was a child. I've been obsessed with Greek mythology since I was a kid. And the first guide who ever introduced herself to me, um, her name's uh, Phoebe, and that's not what I call her anymore, but um, she referred herself to that because it wasn't a dead giveaway on who she was. You know, I needed to mm-hmm. do my research on it. But Phoebe is mm-hmm. actually a very, uh, not such a well-known term for Diana, the goddess of the hunt, who was always mm-hmm. my favorite mm-hmm. goddess. So now I just call her <laughs> that. But I realized that these are actually um, energies that souls can take on, you know, instead of reincarnating as mm-hmm. a human being or as an animal or an alien or somewhere else, you can reincarnate as 
these um, de- deity energies for a single person or for an entire nation. It's been really interesting learning about that. And also my connections mainly um, to the alternate realities or to other dimensions and to um, the alien nations, so the Pleiadians and the Syrians. I'm in mm-hmm. communication with them constantly, my higher self constantly. So it's always this, always going. <laughs> Now, you mentioned that, you know, your whole life you have experienced this. So when, like, what is your earliest awareness of, was it of seeing uh, discarnate energies or or hearing uh, voices? Or, like, what, what did you know and around what age, what was this experience like? Right. Well, I didn't know anything um, when I was younger. It's something that I've realized now that, Mm-hmm. And through my awakening that people didn't experience these things. For example, um, ever since I was a child, I will hear my name being called, whether it's right next to me or down the hall. Um, sometimes it sounds like my mother. Sometimes it will sound like my grams, um, who has now passed on. Sometimes it will sound like a random person. Um, and, Sometimes it'll be in the middle of the night and it'll wake me up. And I thought that was normal. I thought it was something that happened to everyone because you Mm. hear your name so often spoken by people that this was just your brain, you know, vibrating Mm. in your head. And I realized um, from talking to my family that it wasn't, it's not normal. Not everyone experiences that. And the reason that I thought it was also thought it was normal as a child is because my mother experiences that. And she's the only person that I asked about it. You know, oh, okay. I hear my name all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I heard you calling me. And my mom would say, oh, yeah, I hear that all the time. That happens to me all the time. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, you know, mm-hmm. you ask your, your five and you ask your mom and that's the end of it. You don't need to question anybody else about it. Right, so, um, right. I, yeah, and so I slowly learned that these were things that other people don't experience. The intuition that I have other people don't experience, just kind of knowing, not necessarily when things are going to happen, although I have had premonitions about things, whether they happen years later or um, sooner than that. But um, knowing people, knowing if someone's good or bad and their intentions, and um, that's something that I figured out that other people didn't experience. Now, I, I know that I did see something outside of my window when I was around four or five years old that I told my mom that I saw a ghost and – she, you know, as I feel a lot of parents would, told me it was just a nightmare and to not worry about it. But it was something that really scared me. Now, the main mm-hmm. thing that's happened, and like I, I said before, I have very lucid um, dreams, very vivid dreams. I travel in and out um, of my body through my dreams in various ways. And mm-hmm. um, I, once I, literally once my spiritual awakening started when I was 27, I started having dreams that I have not had since I was a child. So I had dreams at a very young age and then they Mm -hmm. stopped. But now I, every year I have different dreams um, that were reoccurring when I was a child. A lot of them have to do with um, ironically the evil witches from Disney movies. I was a huge Disney kid. Still am a huge Disney kid. Mm. And I used to have terrifying dreams about uh, Maleficent and, the mm-hmm. witch from Snow White and uh, the sea witch Ursula. I would have terrifying dreams mm-hmm. about the Wicked Witch of the West, and I would have dreams um, about kind of just an ominous sort of either a, a girl or a woman with long black hair, white mm-hmm. dress, very terrifying, and I would have uh, these reoccurring dreams now, and I still dream mm-hmm. about them, but I know now that it's kind of, um, it's how spirit and the universe was showing me who I am. It's like, hey, you're a Disney kid. Well, these are the witches, because unfortunately, there's not a good lot of, a lot of well-represented witches in the Disney world other than mm-hmm. Mary Poppins and um, Elsa, but they would <laughs> never be called witches, you know, in the Disney world. Right. 
but that was all spirit really had to give me. And I've learned now more recently that it also has to do with this kind of the quote unquote dark side of the witch, which I've really been exploring in my mind and in my heart recently on what that actually means being, um, they call it a gray witch. So you kind of go in between the white and the black magic, um, not to hurt anyone and not to, cause um, harm to anyone as you know that's not my deal but it's more about knowing um, your capabilities and how you um, the resources you have on the other side to channel because ever, things that we've been told are evil or dark or bad even though they can show up that way and people have had some really scary experiences with demons or entities or Satan and that's not I'm not here to tell you that that's not real because it is real. But when you can accept that it's really part of the human experience and what it actually is to, to you, that it's not here to harm you, it's here to help you, um, that's kind of where the shift can make. And that's what I'm kind of doing right now and working on right now. But everything that um, – stems from childhood I didn't know I knew until adulthood looking back I'm like wow um uh yeah I used to just think that my name in my room in the middle of the night was a normal thing to be heard when people don't experience that (laughs) right and so you were then mildly clairvoyant because you did see as you said a ghost did you then other than your lucid experiences and you're, it seems like you were clairsentient if you had like, or claircognizant, like having this knowing of whether people were intending good or bad. Like the, the mediumship aspect, when did that kind of formalize for you? Um, so that would have just been um, in my adulthood during my, you know, I guess it would have started with kind of tarot. I'm still... So every medium such a wide umbrella. I'm kind of mm-hmm. every time someone mentions it, I'm not really sure the answer to give because I'm not exactly sure what <laughs> angle they're coming from. You know what I mean? Right. I don't exactly right. know what you, what they mean. So um, what do you mean specifically when you think of medium? Well, I'm like you. So the word has a spectrum. So I was resistant to the aspect of mediumship that deals with communicating from the dead. Like to deceased loved ones, messages like you see Long Island Medium on TV doing. But I was realizing (laughs) at the same time that I could hear my grandfather. You know, he would sing to me and I would have a conversation with him. I'm like, well, you're you're doing mediumship. So what is the issue? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, uh, I do mean that. But I also understand if you are talking with like Pleiadians or angels or any other energy, that is... Uh, interacting between two dimensions, which is what mediums really are the conduit for in the larger gotcha. sense of the word. So I guess I mean from both places, but really the scary part, you know, the part that gives people pause is like talk to quote unquote dead people or personalities. Right, I see dead people is what I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that I am definitely in communication on the other side with my own family members, so family members that have passed on, ancestors, people who are specifically guides or specifically affiliated or attached to me and who work with me specifically, I've been very, my guides really, and they let up a little bit now and then, but I am in a bubble. I am in a bubble that my guides keep me in. They do not want me Mm -hmm. freely communicating with any other spirit entity, whatever you'd like to refer it to, that is not my mm-hmm. own. That is not mm-hmm. for me. Um, and I'm okay with that. I let them do the reins. That's where tarot really helps me when someone wants to communicate with someone they are looking to speak with on the other side. Um, I get all the messages through tarot then, and that comes directly from my higher self. But it's almost mm-hmm. like the most accurate game of telephone because my guides or my higher self is right. talking to that spirit and then relaying the message mm-hmm. back. I do not directly communicate with anyone else's um, mm-hmm. spirit family or soul family. Um, I know that I will eventually. Um, 
I know that I will be able to see more things or be more clairvoyant in the physical in those aspects. But right now I am mainly clairaudient. So I hear mm-hmm. conversations. Um, even if it has nothing to do with me, a couple of nights ago, I, in the middle of the night, I was hearing a conversation and tried to ask them to hush because it had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to, no one was trying to give me a message. They were just talking. <laughs> So, um, and then definitely clear sentient, clear cause. I'm a little bit of everything, but definitely clear audience mm-hmm. is the most, the most, um, the highest well, thing that I'm perceptive to. I kind of figured that because when you said that you're channeling all the time, it's literally like having a constant conversation with the various yes. guides and energies that you're connected with. It's it's like, uh, what's that mystery science theater 3000 or whatever where that you know it's like the two people of the puppets and the guy and they're all observing the story unfold and having a conversation about it you know right. so it's kind of like exactly. uh, this ongoing experience um now I think that I've heard it termed gatekeeping you know and that that what you describe as having like your higher guide or higher self be the intermediary playing telephone that that is actually one of the safest ways to begin if you think that you are are experiencing communication with other realms making sure that that filter is in place for you so i've i've heard that theory t- taught in many different psychic development schools <laughs> about having yes. that gatekeeper so i think that's very interesting that you brought that up Yeah, it was really, I'm grateful because it was really automatic. This wasn't something that I had to set up for myself. It wasn't um, something super overwhelming and scary started happening and I needed to set something up. They just automatically did it for me. So I think we talked about it before I reincarnated into this lifetime. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, Mm -hmm. when 27 hits, you guys got to just take over because Mm -hmm. I'm going to be getting too many messages from a lot of places as it is. I don't need... um, you know, everyone else's, everyone else's stuff too, you know, something we have to, we, as, you know, as mediums, as readers, as, as psychics in general, you know, we have to learn to take in and then pretty much immediately let go once the message is given. Right. Right. Now, so I have, you mentioned in there, you said black, white, and gray and like embracing the gray. So about the gray, what is the gray part? You know, conceptually me, like it yeah for me it's just um who I am as a person and who I am as a in a spiritual body it hasn't trickled into my practice yet because I I'll say I'm scared you know and I am not someone I am not a witch who curses people I I am 100% believe in karma um and that's not something that all witches believe in, um, uh, but I 100% believe in karma. I've seen it happen to me. I see it happen for other people. I let the universe take care of anything negative that happens to me in my mm-hmm. life, whether it's someone who cuts me off in traffic or someone who really did mm-hmm. me wrong. I give it to the universe. I don't wish bad thoughts on people um, because I do mm-hmm. believe that when you let things like that go, um, the good karma comes back to you. Um, and also, um, the rule of three, which is um, a, a witch thing as well, you know, and most people see it as, you know, you, you point a finger at someone, there's three more pointing back at you. You know, you can't mm-hmm. win in those mm-hmm. situations. So it's, it's more, part of my spiritual journey is towards enlight, enlightenment and being more of a healer is I tend to reject the negative aspects of myself which I think everyone goes through you know I get a little jealous or I get a little angry or I get a little frustrated or impatient and I get really hard on myself about that and I'm learning to accept that that is part of the human journey and that I'm here to experience the whole spectrum of emotions not just the light and happy ones Um, And so being a gray witch for me, it's more of a, almost like an outlook or like, I don't want to say a goal, but it's as if um, that's kind of what, um, 
Spirit is showing me. I'm sorry if you can hear my cat meowing. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's kind of what the future is for me, is being this balance between light and dark that I don't know if a lot of spiritual or, wit- or witches are talking about or if they even know about. It's kind of um, this interesting conversation that I've been having very recently with myself that has to do with um, the satanic energy that exists. And how that actually plays in your in your benefit. I know it all sounds very strange. I'm trying to word myself um, delicately, and I really shouldn't because this mm-hmm. is how I feel about it. But I've I'm not religious, and I've unpacked everything about um, what I was brought up religiously, as in um, uh, you know God. Basically, mm-hmm. um, I was raised at a very young age. Catholic. So that's the only reference mm-hmm. point I have as far as religion. And I know that not all religions, you know, Catholicism right. is its own thing. So that's the only kind of thing I can go by. Um, you know, when people ask, uh, do you believe in God? I have to kind of ask, well, what do you mean by God? Because I only know mm-hmm. the Catholic ver- version of what God is. So I've mm-hmm. unpacked everything in that aspect, but then I still have had this fear, especially as a witch of Satan, the opposite of God, right? The devil and how, and I thought to myself, well, that doesn't make any sense because if I don't uh, believe in God, the way religion um, writes about it, then why would I believe in Satan the way that religion writes about it? And I've really had to um, unpack it um, with myself. I mean, my shadow self, I'm in um, communication with a lot. My, I know I mentioned earlier that something I used to dream about a lot as a child besides the Disney witches was just a a woman or a child, very um, dark, long, dark hair, um, usually a white Mm -hmm. dress, um, very scary, very terrifying. And um, it's funny because I still dream about her, only now I'm in communication with her. I don't know if you ever saw the movie um, The Ring. No, I don't. <laughs> no. Okay, so that it came out a long time ago. Um, if anybody, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, and it came out when I was about 13 years old, and I watched it at a friend's birthday party. Um, and mm-hmm. it literally traumatized me. And it's about a young girl, um, and that's what she looks like. She's got this long dark hair, and her mother, what is um her? It's not really her biological mother. Looks the exact same. So this is what I this is what kind of um, comes to me. This is how spirit manifests itself in my dreams is as this character on this movie. And it's completely terrifying. It has a lot to do with water and TVs and wells and things. And this is how this spirit comes to me. And it used to be extremely terrifying. And it got to a point where I've been able to communicate with her. And usually now when she appears, it's more when I'm in fear of something and it's like a lesson I'm trying to be taught. You know, she's going to come and be like, well, are you really going to be afraid of me? Or are you going to realize that I'm just actually part of you? And the more I analyze now that movie, even though I have not watched it in years, um, I realize that she could have been considered this child in this movie, which is hard to know when you don't know the plot of the movie. So I'm kind of trying to speak um, in terms of people who would know it. But essentially she's this child who is, um, adopted into this family and she uh, is essentially psychic. I mean, she's putting images into her parents' heads, really horrible images. They think she's kind of like a demonically possessed. They make her live in a barn. They take her to a psych mm. ward and where she never sleeps. And everyone thinks she's just kind of this evil. She's the best. She's the villain, right? She's this evil character. And then ultimately her mother ends up, uh, thinking she suffocates her and then throws her down a well. So oh, dear. the premise of this movie, which Naomi Watts is the lead of this movie, is that this Samara, her, the girl's name is Samara, the Samara character is coming back for revenge from the dead, and she's coming through this videotape, um, which makes her come through TV. I know it sounds really complicated, but if anyone out there knows what I'm talking about, you understand it. And this is how, this is what, Spirit was showing me as what my shadow self was. And the more I analyzed this movie in my brain, the more I realized that she was actually like a psychic child, like almost a witch. She could um, 
you know, in the barn that she was uh, put isolated to when she was a child, she actually, um, when Naomi Watts goes to this barn after she's already died, she ta- she tears off this wallpaper they put up, and there's a burnt, um, the burnt like huge image of a tree in the wood of the barn. And how else would a child do that? But if they had some kind of like witch psychic ability mm-hmm. where they could do that, you know what I mean? And just things mm-hmm. like that are themes. So as far as the gray witch aspect, this is kind of what I'm having to learn to accept about myself is there's this darker witch that's in me that I need to learn to embrace and let that come out a little bit. And so it can help me um, manifest the things that I want in life for myself and for other people as well, because what I'm having to learn as well in life is to be a little selfish. I'm a giver and I've given a lot in my life to other people without asking for anything in return, which is great karma for me, (laughs) but I haven't taken any any kind of selfish aspect, which is also where the satanic energy comes in. Um, I know, you know, in tarot, you read tarot, the devil card, right? So I kind of Mm -hmm. always saw that as like the seven deadly sins, you know, our addictions and the seven deadly sins have always been seen as something that we need to get away from and we need to isolate ourselves from and completely hack ourselves off from when actually these are normal human experiences and emotions. And as long as we're experiencing them, you know, a little bit, you know, we don't want to get raffle and kill someone. We don't want to, um, you know, get uh, super greedy and take everyone's money for ourselves and not give back and things like that. But this is the process of, like, becoming this gray witch that I know I'm meant to be is understanding this darker side of it so I can integrate that into um, my practice, again, not to hurt other people or what the stereotypical way that people would assume those energies are manifested into a witchcraft sort of practice. It's very much about um, bringing – still bringing light towards things and bringing um, uh, more towards myself, just bringing out that little, like that little evil part of myself, you know, that I haven't really been able to, I've been a very um, good, uh, respectful, proper girl my whole life. I've never really dealt into the other side of living life, you know, obviously not in excess or anything, but, the experiences and almost part of like being a woman as well. You know, you have um, Lilith and you have Eve, like the two wives of Adam. They're two completely different. And I haven't experienced that Lilith side of myself yet. So I know that that's part of the whole gray witch situation for me. Um, I would think that um, just on a side note, the typical definition of a gray witch would be that people just practice the, the, the white magic and the black magic. So the white magic being, you know, um, you know, trying to put out good vibes for someone or lighting a candle to purify someone's energy or to help um, remove negative energy from someone's life. And then the black magic being like a love spell, that kind of thing. But that's not my yeah, forte. That's not kind of what I, <laughs> what my realm is. Well, that's, that's one reason I was asking about the word gray, because when you said, well, I don't harm people or, you know, I don't do anything to hurt or harm people or animals, you know, or so to me, that's, that was not a gray kind of statement. So I was trying to understand, like, because I would think, okay, dark magic would be that, or black would be that, which has no concern or regard for others, but you were speaking right. from a position that was very much aware of energy exchange. So I was trying to understand the grayness in that. But so from what I'm understanding, what you're saying is more, I, I read the Anne Rice book back in the day. And one of them <laughs> was basically, I think Mem Knock the Devil was the, the book. And the whole storyline is spent with, I think, Lestat going and having this long kind of philosophical conversation with the devil, who was basically right. saying, you know, because of me, you, there, it was like the the two rivals between God and Satan. So it's like this long conversation, and she got a lot of flack for the kind of theology position that it was putting out, which was 
definitely not showing the singing aspect as negative. You know, I right. came up in the church, so to me, any kind of like even fiction or not that goes along that pathway just does not necessarily resonate with me. But I also understand like a Hitler who we would say would be like the, a devil personified in the havoc that mm-hmm. he wrought. However, his the soul that chose to incarnate the Hitler energy was serving for the growth of us as humans to realize what we were not going to be okay with. Right. So he was like an instrument of a lesson that was terrible, you know, like terrible, but it taught us as humanity that, you know, we were capable of things that were darker and that we tolerated things that were worse than we ever thought that we would. So in that he did change humanity forever through a bad lesson. So I kind of get that whole nuance. It's really challenging me. I think because language is very limiting and uh, definitions of things matter. You know, like you said, wanting to just define medium, you know, my thing was I want to define then the word evil because like what you're talking about in terms of character flaws and the challenges we deal with like jealousy, envy, or gluttony, that, those to me do not fall on the level of evilness Unless you right. we were choosing to do deeds that uh, really did harm people and, you know, like Monsanto to me would be evil because they do things that harm people and plants, right? But what you were talking right. about in terms of, of having been harmed as like a child energy and being trapped in this room because of having psychic gifts that were not understood by those around you, that does not resonate as evil you know so this is a great conversation because i mean like it's really helping me to unpack and hopefully for others who will be listening to it as well unpack like the way that we're viewing spiritualism in our own soul journey you know and you're recovering pieces from your past as you said like you know embracing uh, who you may have been in another lifetime and the energy that is a continuity in you even today, even though you're not necessarily on that path, uh, you're in the evolution of that path today based on right. the the life that you lived many, many lifetimes ago, which was probably at a lower right. frequency. Yes. De- oh, definitely. Well, um, I mean, I believe that the only evil on this planet are is – uh, human beings, um, like capable and human beings. Um, I don't believe that there's anything on the spirit side that is necessarily evil. Um, and like the whole, um, the whole Satan and devil thing, you know, I definitely also come from a like, very young, like being, um, have, um, the religious uh, Catholic model ingrained in me. But now that I understand that the higher power I believe in only creates and expands and loves. So that Mm -hmm. higher energy that's going to be the opposite of Satan, you know, if you think of just the story of uh, Lucifer falling um, and becoming the devil um, because God punished him, well, this higher power, I believe in, doesn't punish anything. So Mm -hmm. if you have this situation, I kind of just view it, um, view Satan now kind of like I view Pan in um, Greek mythology Mm -hmm. or Loki in Norse mythology. They're the tricksters. They want you to do the bad things they want to try and trick you and that's their job as the energetic souls or the energy on the other side um which satan i think more of like him as lucifer the the archangel um taking on this manifest form as satan or the devil and trying to tempt you that's his job that's the way he serves us humans is by tempting us into doing these um evil things, whether it's a little bit, you know, just a little bit, or, you know, being Mm -hmm. something that is completely the manifestation of evil on earth. You know, I believe that Mm -hmm. um, if there is a hell that we're living in it now, not all of us experience it um, the same as other people, but that I don't believe that once you go into, um, once you die and you go into that other place on the other side, that there is any kind of um, 
uh, I don't want to say punishment mm-hmm. because I have been to the other side and I've seen place people that are tormented on the other side, but it's something that they're putting themselves through in penance towards from what they've did here, or you'll reincarnate and just pay for it in the next lifetime. You know, I, um, back in the 1660s in Germany, I was, that's one of my past lives. I was a witch that was persecuted. And not only was I, killed but my son was killed as well who now is reincarnated as my brother which is really interesting Mm -hmm. Um, but Mm -hmm. I know that then when that happened that they actually um, killed my son first before they killed me and I cursed everyone and I know that Mm. that um, has trickled down in my family line that I now Mm. because my on my mom's side of the family they're they are German and mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. trickled down my line. So I know that that's like this other like kind of dark energy that I've kept in, you know, those last moments of, of life, that lifetime was spent in anger and, you know, mm-hmm. wrathfulness. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what trickled down. And they say, they say, you know, once a witch, always a witch, whether you are persecuted and you're actually um, a practicing witch or you've been persecuted in the past as one of those hundreds of thousands of people that were killed Mm -hmm. um as witchcraft when they were just normal law-abiding citizens of wherever they come from they um could possibly reincarnate as witches later in life just because that's where they how Mm -hmm. they were persecuted you know so it's just Mm -hmm. always gonna gonna follow you but the the, yeah the gray witch definitely isn't for me it's more of the personal journey and discovering the darkness in myself and what that actually means because I know I'm not an evil person. So, you know, tapping into right. that, is, it's not going to change that. It's not going to change um, who I am. It'll just help me know myself more. What I'm, I think it'll um, help me know what I'm capable of more. And then, like I said, it's more of a future aspect of the great, like who I will be in the future. I'm the hedge witch now, which I think I'll always be that, but it's more of an evolution because like mm-hmm. like you very generously said, I am still very young, so I have a long mm-hmm. way to go. I don't in any, in any way, shape, or form know a molecule of what there is to know about things out there. And that's the exciting part, though, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's so it's exciting. like we're it's just exciting and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> now, how long have you – well, let me uh, – oh, sorry. We had a caller who was holding. I don't know if they were holding for a reading or if they had a question. I'm sorry I didn't make it to you in time. I appreciate you listening, though. Caller, area code 216. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to say for our listeners that this evening we are not having a live on air readings portion of the interview. This is uh, just a conversation with Cecilia about her life, and I will be uh, providing information for you to reach out to her at the end of the show. So if you are holding for a reading, uh, please know that it will. There's not any tonight. So, but um, prior to then. Your well, so your three year coming out of your three year kind of three years in the wilderness, uh, you know, transformation journey, um, and you step then, as you said, from a client to a provider. Are you um, you're seeing clients now? What kind of services are you offering, and what does your typical client interaction look like? Um, to be completely honest, it's not something that I've totally delved into. Doing the psychic fair was a big step for me because I wasn't sure if mm-hmm. I was going to be able to read for people that I didn't kind of know. You know, I, I normally read for friends and family or friends of friends um, where I know at least a little bit about what's going on in their life, but it ended up being so accurate that I went ahead and took that leap and did that, the psychic fair. So it's something that I'm still kind of figuring out right now. Um, I had an, I have an Instagram and it's more now of just um, to view what other people are doing rather than doing anything for myself. I'm a really horrible social Mm -hmm. media person. I'm not, there's (laughs) wonderful things about social media and I'm not one of those people that are like, Oh, social media is the corruption of the universe. (laughs) I'm very much for social media because I don't participate in it. Um, But I do want to keep expanding and doing readings for people 
Um, so it is something that I definitely still want to do and that I'm still interested in. I want okay. to go ahead and because I do have um, like my email address where people can email me and I'm really open to people if they just want to email me about um, and ask questions about what we discussed today or about spirituality or mm-hmm. their own past just in general. And I'm really open right now to just doing, and I know America's saying this, but like if you're listening and you can say that you heard all of this on Joelle's podcast, then I'm cool with doing like a free reading for people right now since I'm still oh, kind of wow. getting into <laughs> it. And I can do that over the phone. Um, you know, I'm not, I want to kind of, I'm, I don't see anything wrong with anyone making a live a living off of their gifts, off using their gifts and like mm-hmm. we do at the psychic fair. But I'm I just kind of want to do it for people just because I love doing it. Um okay. because I have you know. So if anyone wants to email me, which I can give my email um address mm-hmm. and then I can I'm totally down for doing that right now. Um yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I think that's wonderful. I guess we'll say give them the code Good Vibe Tribe, you know. I mean, that's awesome. Um, I appreciate that offer for the listeners. But I know that when the person who hears this in the future, it will be their indicator that, yes, spirit is guiding them to you because there will be an opportunity for them to receive something that is a piece of the puzzle for them, much like how yeah. you said that your friend uh, aligned, Sarah, came into your life at kind of the right trajectory through a serendipitous turn of events that we all know is actually Absolutely. divine alignment. And I know that yeah. that will happen for someone who will end up in conversation with you. I'm really super excited about that. What is your email address? So my email is gypsywitch5 at gmail.com. So it's just G Y P S Y W I T C H five, the number five at gmail dot com. Awesome. And I'll make sure that this is in the description box uh, for this in the show notes so that people will be able to email you directly going forward. Now, we, uh, do you plan to be at uh, the big psychic fair on the first weekend of June this month? Can people sit with you there? Or have you booked you know, in yet? Um, I would – I love doing the psychic fair, and I would love to, but I'm actually um, – in a musical right now, so I have rehearsals okay. on the weekend. <laughs> okay. So yes, we were, we were excited to get you booked right on the now. show because you had your rehearsals and all that. So, okay. So um, I will definitely make sure that I announce in my newsletter and on the Vibrarian page and Insta, um, you know, next time that you – I'm aligned with you to be able to be at the psychic fair as well because I do like to tag and, you know, have those social conversations with people when I yeah. am up there at the Blue Barn. Um, so, and I know you'll be uh, busy, I think you said, through mid-July. So we would be, you know, the big psychic fair is the first of every month, first weekend. So it'd be late summer or fall before you'd be back on deck with that. But those of you who are interested in communicating or if you have have more questions I really appreciate the resource that you have been in terms of helping me to understand more um, about the spectrum of psychicness of spirituality of individual expression um, so I'm really uh, glad to have you in my contacts on the phone personally oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I, yeah this is a great conversation then. Um, I've learned from you as well, and I actually, uh, uh, funny, I haven't looked at uh, my business card in a really long time, but I gave the wrong email address. It's actually gypsywitchtarot5 at gmail.com. Oh, okay. So, gypsywitchtarot5 at gmail.com. So just add tarot in there. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, gypsywitchtero5 at gmail.com. So, Cecilia, yes. it has been a great conversation with you. I really appreciate you. And as you know, I do have a topical show, uh, the Vibrarian Show, where we talk about all kinds of things. And we have had conversations about lucid dreaming and astral travel before. I had a series of panel episodes, but that was a couple years ago. And so I've got you in my notes now 
was a lucid dreaming uh, expert and then also a resource for all things witchery. So um, I think that there will be people who will reach out to you as well, and I'm thankful that you have opened that door for people to do so. Yes, and there's no um, bad question. I don't take offense to anything, so please just be honest and any question that you have or um, – and I'm looking for insight, too. I'm always learning, so um, learning about other people's journeys as well is interesting to me. Awesome. Well, to each of you who have been joining our conversation this evening, I'm so appreciative of your ears this evening or at the point in which you are – listening to it uh tune in definitely connect with the vibrarian on facebook and also on uh, blogtalkradio.com slash the vibrary uh, so that you can stay up with the broadcast schedule i've got some exciting interviews that i'm finalizing the dates for normally i'm here every tuesday and thursday nights at tuesdays at eight for the psychic inside and thursdays at nine for the vibrarian show Right now, I'm just intermittent as I get different things scheduled. I've, we've got some episodes coming up that I think you'll find interesting. One of the hot ones is we are going to be talking about the Yoni or the Yoni, however you want to say it. We're going to be talking about the female sexual energy and the, all of the new conversations that are happening about that. So I've got three awesome panelists that I'm trying to coordinate for that conversation. So please do stay tuned. So, Siri, thank you so much for the time this evening. Did you have anything that you would like to say as your last little wise words to the listeners before we close up? Uh, wise words. Uh, let's see. So I would just say <laughs> on your journey, just trust your intuition and don't be afraid of the judgment that you're going to face because in the end that doesn't matter. Um, you can really only judge yourself. And if you're gentle to yourself and you know who you are, you don't have to worry about the judgment of other people because there will always be naysayers. But uh, just because they're saying it doesn't mean you have to take it in and you are all beautiful souls and you're all here for a reason. The struggle is real in life, especially now there's things going on right now in this country that a lot of us don't understand, mm-hmm. especially us here in Georgia and in the South right now. Mm-hmm. And just keep mm-hmm. the positive light going because it will get better. I can promise you that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think your cat is co-signing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to each of you this evening, I hope for you that you have the most blessed week and that everything that showers down upon you spills out of your arms and into the world around you to keep the blessings going forward. I know that the light in me absolutely honors the light in you. Namaste.